Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, brought to you by the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And we're going to be looking at trading Claude Giroux today. Also, Manscaped. Go check it out. Perlo Dance. Promo code Perlo Dance. And you get yourself 20% off, my friends. 20% off. Um, yeah, we're going to be looking at trading Claude Giroux and the possibility that he could be traded by the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, we're going to look at uh, an article that is uh, pretty interesting. There's a lot to read in the lines of this article. Um, and then we're going to look at possible destinations, another article that gives one destination as a possibility from some really good insiders out there that, you know, people tend to trust. So that's the reason why I'm bringing it up. I'm not just pulling this out of my butt, boys and girls. No, that wouldn't be fun. Um, would it? No. <laughs> so we did, but we did uh, Mark Andre Fleury. We did Chikrin. We did. We tr we traded to Foley away. We're just trading everybody in the land away. All the big names that come up in free uh, in in rumors and. Uh, you know, in big insiders and good articles that come up showing that these players may be traded. We find a place for them and see how it all works out. Check out my Mark Andre Fleury one recently. Yeah, it's been a lot of frolic. A lot of people watching that one. People really liked it, so I think you'd like it too. All right, let's look at the article. Oh, by the way, three thirty to five thirty Eastern, three days a week. Sometimes those days change, but sub yourself up to the channel. And uh, you can be part of the live broadcast that I do daily talking about hockey stuff just like this. We love talking trades and free agencies and all that kind of stuff like that. Also, I do live streams with a fellow named Peyton on the radio. And in the evenings, we do various games, a lot of Edmonton stuff because we're both from Edmonton. But we also do, we just did the Colorado game recently. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm the analysis. He's a play-by-play -play guy. So sub yourself up and be part of the good times because it is good times. All right. Let's take a look at the article in question. Flyers notebook icon Claude Giroux in control of a possible trade. And we're going to be looking at his contract and, uh, and to why he is kind of in control of a possible trade there in Philadelphia. Uh, with the chance Wednesday to recommit to a player, he'd be likened to be the greatest fly in Flyers history. General Manager Chuck Fletcher declined. Once he did, his preference was plain. He would be okay. Look at the way they do that. Big okay. Trading Claude Giroux in his expiring contract before the March 21st deadline. The holdup, if there is one, and now this isn't him saying there's a holdup. Fletcher isn't saying this. This is afterwards. That Fletcher is insisting on it being... Giroux's decision to waive a no movement clause. That respect, Fletcher figures the Flyers' leading scorer has earned. Okay, I want to talk about this a little bit. To me, this is passing the buck. If you, if that, if this is the case, as far as I'm concerned, don't say you're okay trading them. I, I just, just don't say anything. Just say, hey, you know, if you're, if Claude wants to move on, then we'll probably do the best for him. Um, I think that's what he's kind of trying to say, but we'll read more into this. Ultimately, that will be his decision, Fletcher said Wednesday, in a, in a state of the franchise discussion at the Skate Zone, which the state of the franchise is really bad. We are two months from the deadline. The best way to put it is that we'll continue to have conversations. Ultimately, a decision will have to be made one way or another. What does that mean to you? A decision will have to be made one way or another. That means, does that not mean that Claude Giroux has not made a decision one way or another yet? So Claude Giroux is not obviously come right out and said, I'm a flyer, I'm going to stay a flyer, I want to sign a contract, blah, 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 blah. It's up in the air. Giroux is, Giroux is 34 and unlikely to win a Stanley Cup with the NHL team that he has ever, he only had, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's possible if he signed a four-year contract that Philadelphia could be good enough in four years that they win a cup, but it's not looking too good right now, is it? Um, 
While Fletcher is hardly texting Juro hourly, he's engaged with the agent and Flyers captain. So he's not saying what's going on, but what I'm hearing in here is Juro has certainly not said, I, I'm staying in Philly, I'm a Flyer, I'm going to be here, I'll go through this rebuild or whatever you're going to do, right? He is one of the best Flyers ever, ever to play. He is our captain. He's been our best player this year. Nobody cares more about the Flyers than he does. We have to realize that we're what we're dealing with here. And he's a franchise icon. His jersey is going to the Raptors. To me, is a Hall of Fame player. This is what Chuck Fletcher said. So we're going to take this into account. Uh, let's first look at his contract. And actually, and then we're going to look at one more article, and then we're going to go into this to some of the teams that he may go to. So while we're looking at the contract, I will remind you that, you know, I do believe, and most general managers understand the value of treating these kind of players well. He has a no-movement clause, ironclad. He, he doesn't have to go anywhere, and he basically can say where he wants to go. And the reason why I bring this up is because that can really hurt the value of Giroux in the future. Now, people will say, well, maybe we can trade him. He can go to a contender and come back. We'll look at that possibility. Um, it doesn't happen very often. I can't think of a time. Maybe Bra I think Keith Kachuk was the last time I can remember that a significant player, he got traded to Atlanta. And then he ended up going back to Phoenix, I believe, after that, uh, when they were the Phoenix Coyote. But besides that, or was it St. Louis? Or maybe it was St. Louis. I can't, it was one of those things anyways. He ended up going back, and uh, yeah, Atlanta lost in the first round. Those moves usually don't work very well. And if a player, you're, if a team you're trading him to thinks you're going to do something like that, they're usually not too keen on doing it either because it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Um, and this matters, by the way. All of these look goods and what happens and how they treat Giroux here is very important. They've got other people they can need to sign. They might, not, might want to sign free agents in the future. How you treat icons like this in an organization goes a long way to being able to grab free agents later. Like, think, if you're a player and they just treat Giroux like a lump of coal and say, well, you know what, uh, we want to trade you. Give us four teams, and you know you're just going to be happy with this, and you know really tick them off and mistreat them. Are you going to want to sign in that organization? Probably not. Um, it's the, that reputation gets out there. It's important to treat them. So what I'm trying to say with this though is, the return may not be what you think, but there are ways to make it maybe a bigger return. It de kind of depends on what Claude Giroux himself thinks about what he needs to do. The only real leverage I see from the Flyers here is basically um, if we don't get the return, they can say to him, if we don't get the return we need, I'm afraid we're just going to have to keep you. I don't know if they'll do that or what have you, but they, the Flyers don't have very much leverage in this deal. Okay, we got one more. Uh, we're going to look at a, we're going to look at a, another article here real quick just to go to our, before we go to our first team. Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman discussed the changes coming in Philadelphia in the latest 32 shot, two, two Thoughts pro, uh, podcast. This was about two days ago this came up. Among the questions most asked was, what about Claude Giroux? Uh, Friedman believes the Colorado Avalanche are a good fit, but he's not sure how the math works, saying that even if a third team get, gets involved, there's, an, there's not an obvious player the Avs can take off their roster to accommodate his $8 million uh, salary, which is kind of prorated. It, you know, Phil, and that's the other thing in here. Philadelphia can retain, and if I'm them, I'm retaining all day because the more they retain, the more return they can get, but they can only return retain 50%. Uh at best, just over $2 million if a second team gets involved to, to retain money. There you go. So there is a way you can do it, but Colorado is the first one we're going to because they brought it up. 
Colorado Avalanche. That is the team that has been heavy on here. So we'll look at the possibility of them doing such a thing. Um, now, the first thing they talk about, and we always have to talk about, is cap room, which they have none. <laughs> $73,000 in cap space is what Colorado, <coughs> Colorado has. So it is going to be tricky if they are to do something like this. Now, let's look at the roster and see where they might be able to get some, bring some money back or how they might be able to do it. Now, Chicago, um, Philadelphia can retain up to 50% of the salary. Now, he's got about $4 million left in actual dollars. Um, so they can retain $2 million, something like that, in actual uh, $2 million. Now, you can get another team to trade and retain again. There's another that that's been done in several. Uh, they can trade the t they can trade the Giroux to a team like say Arizona, and and add a pick to it. So they get a they get a pick. They retain Philadelphia retains half, and then Detroit trades, or Arizona trades to Colorado, and they retain half. And then in which case they fit under the, that's what they mean by using another a third team to retain. In which case, um, they would still have to give a player back in order to make this work. But look what would happen if Giroux did go to um, Colorado. Now, Giroux, of course, has to agree to this. As far as winning a cup is concerned, Colorado probably would be a pretty sweet place for him to think about going. Um, this team is stacked, 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 definitely a contender this year. And it would give him a fantastic opportunity to do that. Now, the issue here, I think, would be that Colorado probably can't re-sign him after this. So it would be uh, leave his family in Philadelphia, kind of everything up in the air, go for a cup and come back. Or, you know, maybe they take a vacation to Colorado with him until... It's all said and done, but if he wanted to really go for it, it's a possibility that this could be. Now, what would what would go back? Like I said, you could do a three-way deal there where they retain a crap load. Um, I do believe Colorado gave up Colorado gave up their first pick getting Kemper, so they don't have their first. Um, uh, this would also be based on the fact that Giroux gives up a couple teams that he's willing to go to, not just one. And I think the only way Philadelphia would be able to have that happen is say, basically, if we can't get anything for you, as much as we love you, it doesn't make sense for us to move you. It's got to make sense. we got to get a return here. Otherwise, we'll just have you stay in Philadelphia and you can head off. Uh, and that's the way, you, that's the only leverage they have. And that maybe end up being what happens. But if he do, if they do do it that way, Giroux may be like, I'm 34. I got an opportunity to go for a cup here. I'll give you a couple teams. You see what I'm saying? So let's say they do. That will give them a little bit of leverage if a couple of these teams are available. They could get like a guy like Martin Cote, uh, who has been you know working down in the minors for a long time. He's not putting the hugest numbers up there, but he is a fairly big guy, and I do like the way he plays. He's probably never going to be in your top six. He's, he's a decent goal scorer, but he's a player, and you're getting a player back and maybe a second-round pick. And a player that off the roster that could make it work, that would be the difficult part because I really don't think they want to take almost anybody off their roster right now. Maybe Ryan Murray. He's, he's injured all the time anyways, just to make it work. Something like that. But that's about all you're going to get for Giroux, I'm afraid. Uh, a good, you know, maybe A to B prospect, not top, top grade prospect, a second round pick, and a player that possibly you could use in the future. So tell me what you think about that, Colorado fans. Would you be willing to take Giroux for that? Also, make sure you're subbing yourself up.
and being part of all this fine frolic. I'm going to be doing a JT Miller one after this. So you might want to listen to that. Next, uh, Minnesota Wild. Um, oh, I was there. I don't have the. I, I, I just heard recently that that uh, Garen is interested in adding to Shear for Minnesota to go for a run. Now, I do believe Minnesota has a little more cap room than the Colorado Avalanche. Six million in current cap space. So they could really make this work. Uh, they've got some cap space. Again, Claude Giroux would have to agree to this. Um, I, I've also heard that they're big on Hurdle. So, but if Hurdle falls through the cracks and they can't, and they can't bring him in, Giroux could come in and play with Kaprizov and Zuccarello. Now, Claude Giroux's contract, $8 million, I mean, look at how many. He, he's still almost a point-a-game player, guys. 34 points in 40 games. So almost a point-a-game player added to the Minnesota Wild uh, roster right now. I would. Does it make him a contender? It makes him more of a contender for sure. And he's an amazing two-way guy. And he can play wing and center. So the question is, what possibly could the return be? Um, that this is that this is going to be a little more difficult here because Minnesota really I don't think wants to give up too many prospects um, or picks for that matter. But if Garen has said that he's willing to add for the playoffs, I don't think they have much of a choice but to at least consider trading a first round pick or a second round pick uh, what what are you planning on adding that's going to make you all that much better what are you planning on using if you're not willing to give up a first if they were to throw a first out there for Giroux and Giroux is happy to go there he would go there no doubt about it there is that would if he was okay with going to Minnesota for whatever reason and they were willing to pony up a first he would definitely go there. Now, there might also have to be a player involved in this to make the cap room work a little bit. Um, and that could be, you know, like just for now, Victor Rask. They don't really need Victor Rask. Victor Rask can play out his tenure in Philadelphia for the rest of the year um, and a first-round pick. Try that. Minnesota, what do you think? Uh, do you want to go for it this year? Giroux between Kaprizov and Zuccarello. Giroux passing to those two guys. Pretty sweet, actually. <laughs> uh, it would be a very, a very interesting to watch what Giroux could do. I mean, Giroux's put up almost a point a game for the last couple of years, for almost his whole career, and over, actually, on some Philadelphia Flyers teams that weren't very good. So what could he do with Kaprizov and Zuccarello? I think this would might be one of the best lines Giroux has ever played with. And he's still doing well at 34 years old. So Minnesota fans, tell me what you think. Would you be willing to give up a package, something like that? Um, again, if he, for some reason, identified Minnesota as the place he wanted to go and he doesn't give too many options, it might not even cost that much. Make sure you're subbing yourself up, hitting that like button. I'm going to be doing JT Miller. I just did Marc-Andre Fleury. So you want to be part of the frolic, don't you? I would be if I were you, that's for sure. Uh, next, a very interesting one indeed, my friends. The Carolina Hurricane. Um, I didn't even think about this until I started this up and looked at all the places he could go. And then, like, bells went off in my head. Rod Brindamore. What? What is the one thing Carolina probably needs, to me anyways, I believe, Carolina needs more than anything, as far as I'm concerned? A veteran, gristled veteran that's been in the playoffs. It would be great if he had a cup, but he didn't. In comes Giroux. 
at eight million dollars now yes for sure they would uh they they have an internal cap but they're not i don't believe that they're certainly not capped out in carolina and i just have a feeling they would be in on this not even for now but maybe even the future as well Brindamore would be dying for a guy like Giroux. I'm sure of it. And, you know, this is a place, this is something that they could do where he could actually re-sign and stay in Carolina for the rest of his tenure. Um, very interesting. Oh, you know what? Right now, oh, current cap space, $1.8 million. So there would have to be, again, um, what you can add, get another team in here. As I mentioned in the previous teams that I've been doing, you can get another team, do a three-way deal, trade Sheru to a team where they retain half of his salary. So you're going to have to give up a pick for that, you know, maybe to Arizona for a third or something like that. And then Arizona trades to, say, Carolina, retains again, and Philadelphia gets whatever they whatever they get in this deal. So who would be part of this deal? They may not have to do anything like that. I'm they uh, Nino Niederreiter has been is seemingly on the trade block forever for Carolina. I, I don't know what's wrong with this dude. Uh, he in, he uh, he pretty much was jettisoned out of the island. Two or three, he, they were trying to trade Niederreiter in Minnesota for a long time before they actually traded him. And now Carolina doesn't seem to want to sign him either. It could be simply salary. At 5.2, he's going to be a UFA. His numbers may not just look what they, like, his consistency has been an issue with him. He's like a 25-goal, 45-point guy. And if he's wanting over $5 million, I can see why they probably don't want to have him. Now, that being the case, Philadelphia may not want it, want to either. But how much leverage they have, they may think about taking that, making that decision to take them. And Giroux can fit on the left side here on the third line with Stahl, or he can play in the middle. Vinny Trocek is coming off the books next year if they decide, unless they decide to keep him. I'm getting the indication that maybe not. And especially if they got a guy like Claude Giroux to bring that kind of leadership to help out guys like Aho, Terabine, and Svechnikov and stuff like that. To me, I just think this is a very good possibility. Roddy Brindamore would probably be all over something like this. Now, they don't have their first, right? Another guy they could think about is Kakaniemi. Philadelphia is probably looking to get younger. Uh, six million, they're going to have to, you know, Philadelphia would have to, if they make it this deal, they would have to give him a qualifying offer at about seven and hope that heck he turns out okay, or maybe work out a contract for less. But that's a guy that could possibly part, be part of the deal to make the money work and give Philadelphia a young guy that they can cross their fingers with, possibly a second round pick or a prospect like uh, uh, Jalen Chatfield has been doing really well in the AHL. Maybe get a, give, give, give him a shot. Uh, you know, there's Ryan Suzuki. I, I doubt they're going to give up Jack Drury in a deal like this. But something like that. Tell me what you think, Carolina fans. Imagine. Do you not agree with me, Carolina fans? And everybody, sub yourself up. Hit the like button. Come and join me here while we do these. Uh, I got lots of these coming up, so you're going to want to be part of it. Tell me what you think, Carolina fans. Do you think uh, Giroux would be a good spot for Carolina? Next, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes. And as I mentioned in all of these, you can do a three-way deal, retain half the money to somebody like Arizona. They give up a third-round pick, say Philadelphia does, to get it retained. Arizona trades him to Toronto, retains half again, which brings his contract down to a very reasonable spot. And Toronto would, of course, give a player back and a pick. I think Toronto would be on the phone at least. He's, he can, he, they don't need a center, but they could use a left winger. And Mikhaev 
is a free agent at the end of the year. Philadelphia can call up his agent and say, hey, would you be interested in re-signing with us? You're, he's only 27 years old. He's a big guy. He's not a bad player. He's not a bad player. Um, now, I, I, I'm I, sure Toronto would prefer to keep him, but if they're going to lose him anyways, why not a deal like this? Yes, Giroux would probably be a rental here. I doubt very much they're going to have the money to resign him. However, Giroux is from the Ontario area. So uh, where exactly is he from? I forgot. He is from Hearst, Ontario, like I said. So if, unless he takes like a big deal, we know the cap problems of Toronto. It's more than likely that it, it would be a one-year thing. But it may be a dream of his to go try to win a cup with Toronto and imagine – Giroux passing to Tavares and Marner or Giroux with Matt. Imagine Giroux passing to Matthews. Hello? Giroux is an eloquent passer. Beautiful. Not to mention he brings that veteran leadership. He's been to the playoffs before. All of that kind of stuff like that. This makes some sense to me, boys and girls. I don't. I think it would cost more than Mikhaev unless he just says, I want to go to Toronto and that's it then Philadelphia has no leverage, and Makai might be all they get back. But at least they get something. If he gives them a couple teams that they could go to and they get, they get, they can raise it up a little bit, Toronto may have to give up some sort of a prospect or a late pick or a middle, uh, like third or something like that on top of this, maybe even a little more, maybe something, something like Joey Anderson or something like that, who isn't really ripping it up in the AHL. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans, after you sub up to the channel and all of that and get ready for JT Miller, which I'm doing in my next video. Uh, tell would you, would you think that uh, Giroux would work there in Toronto? I know you're probably going to say it's not what we need most of, possibly. But if you can't find a defenseman out there, Giroux would be a fantastic guy to add to that top six, I would say. And finally, and this is my pick, for the likelihood of where he would go. And that would be the Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins. It's not too far away from home. It's closer at home in Toronto. Not sure if they'd ever be able to re-sign him again. Um, but for a rental purpose, this would work absolutely perfect. They're contenders. They need a center super bad. Um, I guess they wouldn't have to sign Nick Foligno next, or Jake DeBrusque, of course, could be part of would be part of the deal. So he would be gone. They would they'd have that off the cap for next year. Giroux's probably gonna Giroux's gonna take less than eight million. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I could be wrong. He is almost a point a game guy. It would depend on him if he wants to fit in a contender or not. Um, it's but it's not very likely that they would be able to. We sign him after this for sure. It would be a rental, but it's a rental that I think Boston would be heavy in doing because they need to win now. Marshawn's 33 years old, Marshawn. Bergeron's 36. This team is not getting any younger. Um, so who would be part of the deal? Probably you'd have to make the money work. Uh, like I said, they, they uh, Philadelphia would retain as much as they possibly could. Eric Halla could go back. You really don't need Eric Halla now if you're bringing Giroux in. Um, he's kind of a filler piece. So if that's all you're giving in return, I don't think Philadelphia is like, oh, yay, we got Halla. We're kind of, they're kind of doing you a favor. So if that's the case – then I'm guessing that I'm going to take a guess here and say like second and maybe uh, Vakaninen or a middle pick in Vakaninen. What would you say about that? It's tough to give up Vakaninen, I know. He's looking like he's not a bad prospect there. But you're going for it now, aren't you? Give me some other ideas, Boston fans, after you sub up to the channel and join as we're going to do JT Miller next. Boston could be part of the JT Miller sweepstakes, I think. It's possible. What would you give up? And do you want him? And 
do you like the deal that I said, basically? Because if you do, having Giroux in between Hall and Pasternak would be pretty darn sweet. I don't really put Boston as a contender right now, but if you brought in Giroux, just maybe, just maybe.